Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you see me well? Could you give me some smiley faces if you can see me and if you can hear me well? I'm waiting for your smiley faces. Oops. Yes, that's fine. Hello, hello. Yay, hello, Anna. So on this Super Friday, and it is Super Friday because it's the first Friday in November, right? So uh, New Year is coming. Um, hello. We're going to talk about speaking. So, uh, do we have any people who has taken IELTS before or who has taken a speaking IELTS test? Yes or no? Okay, not yet. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Yes, and today we're going to be talking about uh, top seven speaking life hacks. Um, have you seen me before? So you guys, could you, okay, good, Anna, re retaking it, okay, super. Have you seen me before? Do you know who I am and why I am talking about IELTS speaking? You might question, hmm, does she know anything about IELTS speaking? Actually, I do. I've been teaching IELTS for over five years. I've taken IELTS myself several times. I'm training IELTS teachers. I've worked abroad in different countries. Oh, oh, nice to hear that. Thank you very much, Anna. Very nice. Yeah, BKC conference. We're going to have uh, another conference next year in February. So my personal result in speaking is uh, 9 out of 9. <laughs> so I um, do know what I'm talking about and I can share some life hacks with you. All right. So first of all, life hack number one, get ready to talk about these two topics. In IELTS speaking uh, part one, the examiner will ask you about accommodation or about work or studies. That's why these are the only topics in IELTS speaking that you actually can prepare for, right? The only two. Uh, why? Well, because these are the kind of the easy topics to talk to. Yeah. So the examiner starts off from some easy topics like accommodation. Do you live in a flat or a house? Tell me about your flat, why do you like it, what would you like to change in your flat, where would you like to live in the future, and also work or studies. But you are not going to be asked two topics. The examiner chooses accommodation or work or studies. Work or studies, the examiner usually asks, asks you, do you work or are you a student? And then uh, if you say, okay, I'm a student, then, okay, let's talk about your studies, right? Why do you like it? What's the most important thing? What was the most interesting thing in your studies? If you say that, okay, I work, or I've been working for BKC for ages. So the examiner asks questions about work. So get ready to talk about these two topics. Get ready, I mean, research, find your collocations, your grammar structures, adjectives, uh, good words for you to use about these topics. Yeah. Then, in speaking part one, topics could be, you know, anything. Here I have uh, some nice examples for you. Look at this beauty. We've got so many different topics and um, they are in speaking part one, which means the examiner might ask you questions about any of these topics. And also there are many more topics, so it's just like, I've chosen some interesting ones, right? Could you have a look and tell me which topics are the most difficult for you? So let's imagine that you are taking an IELTS exam now, IELTS speaking, and the examiner asks you, okay, let's talk about dreams, or let's talk about your name, what's the meaning of your name? So which of these topics could be challenging for you, could be tricky to answer, to talk to, well, to talk about these topics? Could you give me your answers in the chat uh, section? Hats or water? Robots, okay. Yeah, hats are um, tricky. Like, what kinds of hats do you like? Where do you buy hats? Oh, I know. Do you often wear hats? Okay, sharing, yes, Natalia. Do you like sharing? 
uh, did your parents uh, teach you how to share or what do you usually share? Yeah. Rain? Everybody is fine with rain? Or plants, for example, animals? Let's talk about wild animals. What's your favorite wild animal? Have you got it? Okay. Does everyone know the meaning of their names and why your parents gave you this name? Because um, for IELTS it's pretty important. If you uh, sunglasses, okay, yeah. Sunglasses, like, uh, do you like wearing sunglasses? Uh, where do you go to buy sunglasses? How often do you wear sunglasses? Yeah. Also, age. That's an interesting uh, topic. Uh, like, let's talk about age, and then the examiner might ask, are you happy with the age um, you are now? And they're kind of like, okay, that's a philosophical question. Hmm, how old am I? You know, uh, the sky. Also, one of the topics could be the sky. Let's talk about the sky. Do you enjoy looking at the sky? Why? How do you feel? Um, do you enjoy looking at the stars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what's your lucky number? So, um, after you get ready, for these two topics, yeah, for accommodation and local studies, you should pretty much have a look at the other topics and um, perhaps choose the trickiest ones for you. And again, get ready, um, just like I know, mentally get ready that the examiner can ask you about the sky or shoes. Okay, um, life hack number two. Know the format of speaking part two. So, speaking part two, the examiner gives you a card. Actually, the examiner gives you some paper. Uh, this kind of card, I have an example here. This is an example of a card. Again, the topic could be uh, different. Uh, and the examiner gives you some paper and a pencil. Uh, because here, in part two, you have one minute, you have 60 seconds to prepare for your answer. You can write, um, like you can take notes if you wish, because the examiner gives you some paper and gives you a pencil, and you're kind of, you are given 60 seconds to take notes. Some people don't take notes, but actually it's a very good idea for you to take notes. Uh, you don't write sentences, no, there's no time to write full sentences, to write an essay, no. You just write down the key words, the key phrases, uh, it's better to write some advanced phrases, like, oh, what do you know about this topic? Do I know any advanced adjectives or some advanced collocations? Or oh, maybe not advanced, but some, you know, uh, of a higher level, not just like good and nice. But what else do I know? Some phrasal verbs, some, I know, phrases for you to, uh, for you to use about this topic to show off your vocabulary. Uh, also, you can jot down some grammar structures. Oh, can I use the second conditional? So this is how you use your 60 seconds. If you, if you are given the cards and then you go, oh, I can start speaking right away. Well, not a good idea because again, the examiner has the agenda. The examiner follows a certain procedure. So please kind of like do what you are uh, told to do. If the examiner gives you 60 seconds, use the 60 seconds. You can just like sit there kind of like, you know, staring out of the window or staring at the examiner like that. Uh, well, it might not be a good idea, but... Well. So use this uh, 60 seconds to, again to prepare, and, uh, to collect your thoughts, to jot down some good language. Yeah? The task here is for you to speak from one to two minutes. So the examiner asks you, now you should speak from one to two minutes. Now the question, is it better to speak for one minute or is it good for, to speak for two minutes? So which is better, one minute or two minutes? Could you uh, please write down your answers? What do you think is better, one minute or two minutes? Do you have to fill up these two minutes with your English speech or no? Okay, I have two and two. Actually, yes. It's much better for you to talk, yes, Irina, for uh, two minutes um, to just show the examiner that you can do that. Well, Mar uh, Marina, it depends on what? On the topic. 
again, for a higher score, and I mean 6.5 or higher than 6.5, like 7 and above, it's much better for you to talk for uh, two minutes. Again, if you have no idea what to say, well, one minute and a half, you can stop and then like signal to the examiner, oh, that's all I can say. Then uh, the examiner will ask you more questions. But again, like, mm, it's much better to talk for two minutes. Yeah. So speaking part two. Um, if you have questions at this uh, point, could you just um, write them in the comment section? Okay. All right. Now, um, in speaking part two, the cards may have different topics. Yeah. Have a look. The same as in speaking part one, we've got different topics. Speaking part two section, the cards, the monologue topics, could you know a range from a plant grown in your country to a law you like. Could you have a look at the topics here and could you tell me which could be tricky for you to talk about for two minutes? Again, this is kind of like one topic and one topic will be in the card. Yeah? You, you won't have in the exam like all the topics. Oh, you, you kind of, you, um, could you choose a topic, please? No, the examiner gives you one topic. Again, the examiner, there are many more topics. I have just some examples of topics, yeah? Law, yeah. Gosh, describe a law you like. And again, you can be ready uh, to describe this, to talk about these topics, because they are online. If you just uh, Google, Speaking part two topics or questions, you'll have some lists where you can actually have a look. Wow, like a lot of topics, and you can choose the most challenging topics for you and kind of uh, prepare your answer or have an idea what to talk about. Yeah, have you got a writer you want to meet? A plant grown in your country or a tree? A TV advert, like advert, advertisement, or ad? You have never forgotten world. Also, it could be, you know, here, for example, a writer. So this is about a person, yeah? Uh, they can ask you about um, an actor you like. They can ask you about a child you know. Do you know any children? Um, they can ask you about a celebrity, a celebrity, your favorite celebrity. Well, Anna, yes, a good question. Who watches them? But again, on YouTube, you know? Oh, wow, that's a nice one. Yes. Yes, a lot of uh, questions could be about a situation. A situation when uh, you had to use your phone. A situation when you had to cancel some event. Or a situation when you, you were late. Or when you had to apologize. You know, a situation when and then uh, uh, any situation. A situation when you visited your colleague at the workplace. <sighs> visited my colleague at the workplace? Really? Yeah. Again, if you have no idea what to say, can you make it up? Can you lie to the examiner? Or do you have to tell the truth? Surely you can tell a lie. Yeah, it's going to be a white lie. Well, make it up. So as long as, as it's uh, relevant, you are politically correct, you are polite, it is fine. Yeah. So, uh, speaking part two, we are getting ready for different topics. And uh, you have 60 seconds to prepare. Use this 60 seconds. And then we are speaking for two minutes. Yeah. Again, if you have no idea what to say and you can kind of feel that, oh, that was a bit short, yeah, you just signal to the examiner, oh, that's all I, I can say. Right, so the, the examiner understands that, okay, you're kind of like out of ideas. Okay, um, moving on. The third life hack is about speaking part three. We give detailed answers in speaking part three, the last speaking section. Yep, in uh, the speaking part, there are three sections. Speaking part three is the last section. We give detailed, extended answers, right? Because in speaking part three, the questions are longer and they are, they, they, you might feel that they are more challenging. They are kind of longer and um, speaking part three questions are usually about 
the world in general. Kind of speaking part one is about you. Speaking part two is about you again. Uh, but speaking part three is about your opinion on other people, on uh, some events, about just the world in general. So here you show off your ability to talk about things in general, to generalize, to express your opinion, and give extended detailed answers. The uh, formula could be as follows. You answer the question, then you explain why you think so, and then you give an example. You see, and this uh, structure is very similar um, to the essay structure, because in the essay, in the writing uh, section two, you kind of give the main idea, and then you explain it, and you give an example. Example or result, yeah? Um, uh, Alina, a good question. The examiner can interrupt, um, not interrupt, but can stop you. If you are speaking for, for too long, for example, in speaking part two, if you are speaking for more than two minutes, the examiner will say, thank you. Because again, the examiner controls the time and the examiner has strict time limits, right? So if you speak longer, the examiner stops you. But the examiner has no right to interrupt. Like you start speaking and then the examiner interrupts or answers the question for you. No, that can't happen. The examiner asks the question, you start answering. If you speak for like longer, more than two minutes or kind of like you are giving too much English, you know, so the examiner just stops you, but about interrupting, no. Right, so in speaking part three, uh, how can you make your answers detailed? So by following this formula, you answer the question, then you explain it, and then you give an example. Like, for example, Moscow or for example, um, some people enjoy uh, iPhone or Samsung, you know. And um, this could help you to kind of extend your answers and like, give more yeah, in speaking part three. Right. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions? Ah, the questions related to the Q card. Yes, Marine, uh speaking part three questions are going to be about the topic you have in speaking part two. For example, in speaking, if, for example, I have this topic, yeah, this card, in speaking part two, I talk about a film. Yeah? Speaking part three questions are going to be connected to this topic, but are going to be more general. For example, in speaking part three, the examiner might ask you, do you think that films have changed over the years? Yeah? Or do you think, uh, or why do you think more people prefer going to the cinema? Or what are the advantages of watching a film at home and what are the disadvantages of watching a movie at the cinema? You see, so more general questions. Then the examiner might change the topic a little bit. Now let's talk about, um, for example, cinema, yeah? Or let's talk about uh, advertisements, yeah? Still kind of connected to films and the cinema industry, um, but kind of more general. In task three, uh, Elena, mm, how many questions? We don't know. It depends on how you answer the questions. Because if you really give detailed answers, so for one question, you give a lot of, mm, kind of a long answer. Yeah. But again, the examiner has a time limit. So like speaking part three usually takes about five, six minutes. Right. So again, if you give a very detailed answers, so the examiner will ask you fewer questions. But if your answers are shorter, the examiner will ask you more questions, you see, for you to kind of um, to answer them. Uh, how many questions? Well, four, maybe six, eight. Again, it's difficult to say because um, it depends on the answers. If the answers are very short, then more questions. If they're kind of extended, very detailed, uh, you speak for a long time, then fewer questions. How many? Um, no idea. Uh, if the, the speaking part uh, takes about 11 to 14 minutes, 
Yeah, so three parts from 11 to 14 minutes. So we can kind of like divide uh, this um, 14 minutes, kind of like five, five and five. That's going to be 15. So kind of like four minutes for the first part, then um, about uh, six minutes, I think, for the second part and the third part also. So kind of like divide uh, this 11 minutes into three parts and you will see how much time each section takes. Okay. Um, yes. So extended answers. Again, the more you say, the better. Uh, in the criteria, by the way, uh, it says that the candidate should speak at length. So at length, meaning kind of like waterfalls of English, you know, at length. All right, uh, moving on. Yes, and in speaking part three, we've got uh, these kind of questions. Very often, the examiner asks you about advantages, disadvantages, or like, what do you think of uh, global warming? Uh, what, how essential is um, to keep fit in your country? Or why do you think this is so, you know, uh, some people prefer asking parents for advice. Why do you think this is, why do you think they do that? Or a very common question, is, uh, how has it changed? In speaking part three, very often the examiner asks you this question. For example, um, advertisements, how have they changed? Or um, shopping habits, how have shopping habits changed over the years? And the future. Very often they ask you about the future, speaking part three, what will happen in the future, what films uh, will be in the future, will it change in the future? Or for example, uh, let's if you talk about family, yeah, in speaking part three, uh, has uh, have families changed over the years, or what will happen to uh, different families in the future, or tourism? Will people travel more in the future? Again, um, this gives you an idea of, of what kind of kinds of questions you'll be asked, yeah, and uh, uh, sorry, and uh, you can kind of get ready with the grammar. For example, this one requires present perfect, right? So something has changed, right? Or it used to be this, now it's become this, yeah? The future here, you can demonstrate, show off your uh, future structures, like mm, it's going to be, right? Or it's gonna be, it will be, it's likely that, for example, robots, will every person have robots in the future? Mm, like most people are likely to have a robot at home, you see, are likely to. Or uh, probably will, yeah, so uh, yeah. So be ready to uh, answer these questions. All right, life hack number four. If you didn't understand the question in um, speaking part three, in speaking part one, like what do you do? What do you think? Could you uh, type the answers in the comment section? What do you do if you don't understand the question? The examiner asks you something, you have no idea what. What do you do? What are your actions? Any ideas? Waiting for your answers. No answers? Okay. Um, we ask, uh huh. Yes, Anna, absolutely. Yeah, Alina, yeah, maybe you say, what? What did you just say? Um, yeah, not a good idea. We're, we want to be polite and nice. So you, when, uh, like, if you don't understand the question, you ask the examiner to repeat the question. It's fine. It's perfectly okay, you know, because again, you might get distracted. You may not understand the examiner. The examiner might have an accent or something like that. I don't know what, but uh, you can nicely, politely ask the examiner to repeat the question. Just uh, using some of these, yeah. Could you repeat the question, please? Could you say this again, please? Also, you can ask the examiner to rephrase the question, especially in speaking part three, because in speaking part three, the uh, questions are long, and actually they can be very long, and you may not catch the question, yeah? Uh, or perhaps you may not understand some words, which is uh, worse, but again, you can ask the examiner, could you rephrase it, please? Rephrase. 
Uh, Marine, the examiners um, have a list of questions and they choose and they kind of have a list of questions for a speaking part one. Also, they choose a topic, uh, speaking part two. How they choose, I have no idea. But it's not just like, oh, like whatever pops into my head, I'm going to ask you. No. Uh, they have a set of questions. In speaking part three, they may uh, change the questions a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but again, they have a topic, but they can, uh, in speaking part three, they can create and change the questions. Yes. Mm, depending what you say, yeah, and how you answer the question, depending on the answer, they can uh, change the question. Yeah, for kind of for um, for this section to be kind of like more smooth. Yeah, but it's not just like oh, I want to ask you about um, rabbits. Yeah, what do you have a rabbit at home? No. Um, yeah. So if you didn't catch the question, if you don't understand the question, please don't answer it. Okay. Just ask the examiner to repeat it. Could you rephrase it, please? Use a nice, polite intonation. Could you rephrase it, please? Yeah. And uh, the examiner will uh, rephrase it. Okay. Um, lovely. Life hack number five. Use posh words. Here I have a picture for you. Look at this. These people are posh. How do you understand the posh? Like, is uh, David Beckham uh, with uh, his wife posh? Yeah, they are pretty posh. So, posh words, um, I have a question here, Alina. Are there any special phrases or words that you prefer? Ooh. Any special phrases the examiner prefer? I don't know, because really, it, it's like close, you know, I prefer, you know, dresses, um, some of you prefer jeans, uh, others prefer shorts, like, no, it's all individual. I don't think that the examiner prefers certain words. Um, you use the, uh, for a higher score, for seven and above, you need to use advanced words. And kind of like, uh, Alina, we're going to have a look at which words you can use, yeah? What they prefer, the examiners, I have no idea. They kind of, um, they might prefer, I don't know, like, what do they prefer? No idea. Okay, um, posh words. Uh, by posh words, I mean some. Mm, I'll tell you what I mean. Here, can we say that these words are posh? Kind of posh, I mean kind of like posh. Are they good words to use in our speaking? Yeah, Urgent uh, uh, doesn't seem to like these words. So if you kind of think in your speaking, Mm, exactly, Marina. Absolutely, like her, her words. Yes, uh, exactly. So if you use these words, oh, great, nice, good, very good. Oh, that was good. That was great, great, very nice, 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 nice. All the time. Yeah, these are very simple words. Mm, they are for band five, uh, six is okay. But again, for a higher score, band six point five and above, right? For an eight or for seven, like uh, they are kind of too easy, you know. So, we are using these ones. Look at that. So, these are the posh words that you can use to, again, to upgrade your score uh, for uh, vocabulary criteria. Yeah? There are four criteria in speaking, and one of them is vocabulary, a range of vocabulary, uh, like lexical resource. Yeah? So, posh words, instead of good and nice and great all the time, you say fabulous, um, or you say attractive. I met some attractive people, yeah, or awesome, like the hotel was awesome, um, awesome, like cool, like yay, yeah, yeah, great, yeah. Instead of uh, saying, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, what do you think? I think, I think, I think, I think, oh, come on. Uh, you can say, I reckon that, like, I reckon that Moscow is the best uh, city in the world. I reckon that this dress is very nice, you know, it matches my lipstick. What do you reckon? Yeah? Reckon is the same as I think. You can also say, I'd say that, I'd say that Moscow Metro is beautiful. I'd say that this dress, dress is very nice, you know. Um, what do you reckon? I reckon. Phrasal verbs are pretty posh, especially if you want seven and above. 
I want to take up yoga. Take up yoga, like I want to start yoga. So instead of saying I want to start yoga, you use a posh word, take up yoga, yeah, in phrase of verb, which means the same as start. What do you want to take up? Could you write me a sentence? I want to take up cooking. I want to take up swimming classes. I want to take up bungee jumping, you know, when they um, tie uh, your feet with a rope and then you can you jump from a cliff or somewhere. In Sochi they have this. Yes, Marinea, yeah, avoid the using good. Um, well, again, if they don't know what to use, uh, not to break the flow, they can use good. But it's nice to train them to use other words, all right? So, I want to take up yoga, uh, I get on well with my colleagues, like I have good relationship with my colleagues. Uh, if you talk about your work, yeah, like let's talk about work or studies, like what do you, what's the most interesting part in your job, and you say, mm, I really, I love my job. Um, the best part is um, I meet different people, I really get on well with my colleagues uh, who help me, so I really enjoy it, so something like that. I'm keen on cooking, instead of saying I like, I like, I like, I like all the time. I'm keen on cooking, I enjoy dancing, I, um, I love eating, cooking and eating, eating and cooking, yum, yum, yum. I love Italian cuisine, cuisine, wow, that's a posh word. Again, uh, you can say I love Italian food, no problem, I like Italian food. But if you want to use a more kind of like... Uh, Porsche word, yeah? You can say, I love Italian cuisine. Which cuisine do you like? Georgian cuisine, Russian cuisine, French cuisine, Indian cuisine? Could you write um, in the comment section, what cuisine do you like? I like Italian cuisine, yes. Lasagna, pizza pasta, pizza pasta. And uh, I also like Georgian cuisine, hachapuri. Yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah, so, um, Alina, yes, you were asking about so what examiners prefer. So you can use um, like some of these words to start, to start off with. Yeah? And by this, I mean uh, posh words. So we avoid, no, 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 no. We avoid um, easy words and we use much more uh, complex words. Yeah? And also, for example, adjectives, uh, if you want to say, oh, it's very cold in Moscow. Use one word instead of saying very cold, you can say it's freezing cold in Moscow or it's freezing in Moscow. Yeah. These words. Lovely. Life hack number six. Keep going. Okay. For seven and above, so band seven, so if you want seven uh, score for IELTS, yeah. uh, nine is uh, the top score from one to nine. So if you want seven and above, you need to keep going. All right, just keep going, keep speaking. And which is uh, very important, avoid language-related pauses. What is language-related pauses? It means that, you know, when you speak, you're speaking, 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 da 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 Roberts, yeah, yeah, Italian cuisine, blah, 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 blah. And you make a pause, you stop. And you stop, not because you just don't, don't know what to say. I mean, you, you don't have an idea. You stop because you forget the language, or you don't have this language, or you don't have this word. You kind of, you kind of, you are searching for words, and that's why you are making these pauses, hesitations, uh, interruptions because of the language. So if you do make these pauses, you kind of, you are forgetting words, or you kind of like you don't have these words. Uh, it's six, six point five, right? Band seven and above is just like you know, keep going. Robots, hats, age, uh, rabbits, uh, pink elephants, doesn't matter. I keep going. No language related pauses. I'm not thinking about the language, you know. I just went, okay, I, I can think about an idea. Hmm. Wow, well, that's an interesting question. What can I say? Whoa, that's a difficult question, you know. And then like, I keep going. Um, well, Marine, um more colloquial. The whole speaking could be more colloquial. In speaking part three, the questions are more complex and you can use some academic terms if, for example, you talk about ecology, right, or tourism, or um, 
economics, right? You can use some terms and you could sound a bit more formal, but again, it's kind of, it's informal, right, genuinely, yeah. But you can use some specific terms, precise words. High flown, no, I don't think so, you know. It depends on the question. Um, if the question is about, again, ecology, you may use um, some precise academic words. But high flown, like Shakespeare, English, you know. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? You know, no. I don't think it's high flown. Natural, and we're going to talk about it in the uh, next live hack. So, Marine, hold your horses a little bit. Yes, so keep going, avoid language related pauses. Yeah, again, if you hesitate, if you stop to think of a word, if you stop uh, to think of uh, which words to use, 66.5. 6 yeah, so that's kind of the major difference. If you do forget a word, you paraphrase, because band seven, um, score seven, it means that you can effectively paraphrase, you know. You are speaking and then you, you feel, that, oh, I'm forgetting something, and kind of you paraphrase, you just say something else or you change the idea but kind of like keep going this is uh, super important because usually what happens you know you start speaking and they say yesterday i went to a shop and i bought <sighs> and then you kind of you forget a word and what do students do they kind of like and then the kind of like error error happens and they are unable to paraphrase no don't do that please don't do that Paraphrase, uh, use a synonym, explain what you mean. It's actually uh, much more effective if you just start speaking at a time and then, oh, sorry, I just got confused. Let me start again. Let me start again. And you start the whole idea again. It's better rather than just like, I forgot uh, how to say this in English. Yeah. So keep going. Now, the last life hack of today is natural and informal. What do I mean by uh, being natural and sound natural? Yeah. Natural, it means, uh, like Marina was asking, high flown, but kind of Shakespeare, um, Shakespeare's English, it should be natural because speaking is the only the only part of the exam which is informal. Speaking is informal, it should be natural. And the more natural you are, the higher the score is. Well, sure, it should be accurate, um, fluency, but again, it's kind of like natural, like real life. But again, with um, advanced words, so with varied grammar structures. So here it's a little bit not like real life because you have to push yourself and squeeze in some complex grammar structures some posh vocabulary, phrasal verbs, maybe one idiom, you know, some idiomatic expressions used naturally. Again, if uh, we talk like robots, London is the capital of Great Britain. No, it's kind of, it's uh, robotic, it's monotonous, not natural. A natural um, vocabulary should be natural. The use of vocabulary should be natural. If you do use some idiomatic expressions, you use them naturally, but not just kind of like I have to use these idioms and I'm gonna use them and in every sentence there's an idiom, an idiom, like uh, give me nine for vocabulary. No, no, because if um, uh, the phrasal verbs or if uh, idioms are used unnaturally, uh, your vocabulary uh, score is not gonna be high, you know. So everything you use should be natural, sound natural, yeah. Uh, also about intonation. Mm, intonation should be quite natural. Again, not monotonous, but like, mm, mm, mm. and again, not too much. Like, uh, 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 how are you? Uh, uh, uh. No. Um, again, like rises and uh, falls. Mm, four and nine. You need to sound like an educated native speaker, right? But again, to get seven and um, above. You do need to show like the um, a range of intonation patterns. So avoid this like da, 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 da. Yeah. so vary your intonation patterns again to sound natural. And natural meaning that you do smile. You actually can smile uh, in IELTS speaking. Uh, be positive. If you talk about um, a restaurant you like, 
like kind of mean it. Like I love this restaurant, you know, the, the lasagna I um, ate last time. It was amazing. It was so delicious. I was on uh, cloud nine when I tasted it. You know, kind of mean it. Okay, we have another question. Um, bookish words. Gosh, Marine, could you give me an example? Could you give me an example of a bookish word? If your bookish word um, is in the right context and is used naturally, if it's uh, some term on ecology, uh, yeah, okay, it could work. But if you just using bookish words um, unnaturally, like, no. Better use like a simple word, but it's going to be like kind of, um, it's going to sound natural in the flow. Yeah. Could you give me an example what you mean by a bookish word? For example, oh, oh uh, seldom. I seldom go to the cinema. <gasps> seldom. Seldom, like really nobody uses seldom. Come on, you guys. This could be kind of a bookish word, old fashioned. Seldom. We don't say seldom, we say uh, hardly, hardly ever. Okay? Like I hardly ever go to the cinema, or you can say rarely. I rarely go to the cinema. Uh, or, for example, the examiner asks you, How often do you wear sunglasses? And you're like, Once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, you know, kind of like hardly ever. So, seldom, that, that could be strange, to be honest. How important is your accent? Yes, Marina, hilarious, no, hilarious is a good word. Hilarious is a posh word, it's a nice word to use, it's an advanced word. So, um, if, for example, you talk about a funny film, you say, uh, the last film I watched uh, was this hilarious movie with, um, what's his face, uh, Jim Carrey. Yeah, that's a nice word, that's not a bookish word. Um, how important is your accent? Um, you should speak so that the examiner understands you. This is the only requirement. The examiner should understand you and um, it should be accurate. If you make pronunciation mistakes, again, for a high score, um, no good. Like, as long as the examiner can understand what you say, it's fine, because everybody has uh, their accents and it's okay. You should, be, you should be proud of your accent, you know? So, uh, which is fine, you know? Can you understand me? Okay. But if the examiner doesn't understand you because of the accent or because of the way you pronounce certain things, this is not good. Uh, again, tell your student that if the examiner understands him or her, it's fine. Again, uh, tell your student that uh, they should be proud of their accent. Uh, there are so many people in this world um, for whom language uh, English is the second language. Yeah, Ksenia. Okay. Mm, yes, Ksenia, it's okay if you write uh, T and F for true-false in the answer sheet. It's perfectly fine. Um, it's okay, you can do that. Um, careful with yes-no not given uh, tasks. If you have yes-no not given tasks, you should write yes or no or this like, one letter Y or N. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and here I have informal. So speaking is informal, right? Reading in IELTS is quite formal. Writing is formal academic, right? Uh, in academic module. But speaking is informal. It means that you can uh, say something. I'm going to tell you about... Um, about what? I'm going to tell you about Terminator, which I watched last week. Yeah. This kind of film and few uh, last watch, watched. So, or I want to go to New York, or um, mm, phrasal verbs tend to be informal. So, like a colloquial, uh, some mm, idiomatic expressions. So, it's all fine as long as you are politically correct and you're polite. Again, we don't use slang words. We are not like too informal, like we use slang and F words. No, uh, informal kind of like, but still, you know, not slang and um, rude words. Uh, okay, now, have you got uh, questions, ladies and gentlemen, if we have any gentlemen here? 
Have you got uh, questions about uh, the uh, speaking part? Anything about uh, life hacks, strategies that we'll discuss today? Anything about the scoring, maybe? So shoot your questions. Okay, cool. We have IELTS uh, Speaking for Success podcast where uh, myself and one of my colleagues, Rory from Scotland, we discuss um, speaking questions and Rory answers some of the speaking questions. The first episode was about names, then we talked about robots. So we are choosing these like tricky topics. Um, the next podcasts are going to be about age. We're going to talk about water. So for you to see how you can answer the questions, and again, like, um, like we we we're trying to use to use this, uh, tricky topics, and uh, how you can answer these questions using some high level vocabulary and grammar structures. So you can uh, um, listen to this podcast on SoundCloud or Spotify and Google Podcast. It's going to be on iTunes soon. So here's a QR code. So I'll be happy if you listen to our podcast and um, hopefully uh, it's going to be super helpful for you. Scoring. Marina, what's your question about scoring? Uh, Alina, you can actually write small letters or capitals, it doesn't matter. I prefer to write capitals. I write everything in capitals, in listening and reading. For example, yeah, I write like a student. Yes, I did. In capitals, it's uh, easier um, to check and it's clear. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, then, speaking scoring is a broad um, topic. You know, I can talk about speaking scoring, I think, for 24 hours, maybe more. So which aspect of scoring um, are you interested in? There are four criteria in um, speaking. Uh, first of all, fluency is assessed, grammar uh, structures so, and accuracy, vocabulary, so lexical resource, and pronunciation, so four criteria. Uh, according against which you are assessed and the scoring is from 1 to 9 uh, also you can get like a half bands 6.5, 7.5 oh the examiner the examiner is uh, not biased the examiners are trained people they are moderated they are kind of monitored uh, constantly they are trained uh, every once and again they have some training standardization and uh, they are monitored uh, really often so uh, they, they do the, their job you know um, if you personally know the examiner the examiner uh, has no right to assess you for example if i take an ielts exam in our center and i personally know this examiner i will be sent to another examiner who doesn't know me you see so, uh, which again proves that um, the examiner should be unbiased. So you just walk in and you speak English, the examiner assesses you against uh, the criteria. So the examiners are nice people, you know, they just... Um, some people said, oh, the examiner was so serious and uh, didn't smile. But again, it's their job, you know, like how often do you smile at work? Kind of, you know, some people even uh, don't like their job. <laughs> Or maybe they're just having a bad day. Um, so the examiners are fine. You know, just like go in, do your job, do your best, speak English, uh, keep going, use some good vocabulary, and uh, Bob's your uncle. You're gonna get your score, but also kind of prepare well. Yeah. All right. Do we have any more questions? This is our website, so ielts.su. Uh, you can have some. Uh, you can have a look at what we have, and we have some articles there, we have courses, uh, programs, and um, this is our um, general website. Also, we have a blog. We have um, uh, some videos on YouTube, some really interesting videos. Also, like I, I'm there on our YouTube channel. Have a look on um, at our Instagram uh, also channel, MBA um, from IELTS. Um, 
www.ielts.su. We have some posts about IELTS writing, about IELTS vocabulary, so you can just subscribe and get some useful stuff. Yes, um, Rene, in the speaking exam, you are recorded. You are face to face with the examiner and a recording device. Everything is recorded and then assessed. Um, no, the, mm, the examiner who asks you questions assesses you. Yeah? It's recorded. Uh, if you disagree with the score yeah, and you appeal, you pay for this um, procedure, uh, in this case, they take the recording some other person listens to the recording yeah, and assesses it. If they agree with the previous assessment, the money is not reimbursed, right? And uh, your band, your score is left as it was. If uh, the person, another person who listens um, to the recording gives you a higher score uh, for this, then your mark is changed and the money is uh, reimbursed, is given back to you. You see, so this is kind of this, you can appeal. Mm. Yeah, super. Okay, this is the end for today. We're gonna be having more webinars on different uh, parts of IELTS. So subscribe to our channels, uh, kind of like stay tuned in, tuned in. Um, yeah, you are very welcome. Have a lovely Friday, have a super weekend, super November weekend, and uh, I hope to see you soon in the virtual world, okay? Or maybe face to face, all right? Okay, take care, and see you later. Bye-bye.